and welcome to an all new episode of Circle Walking, where we start in an electronic section that I haven't shown in this series before. Here on this shelf is a Dell PC, not particularly special. It had a couple of scuffs on the side, certainly not special when I saw that it came without any added cards. Not terribly priced at 15 bucks, but at the moment I have no need for it. This PC on the other hand had a dual DVI video card and added USB. How fancy. I don't remember exactly what they were asking, but I think it was around 50 bucks, which is ridiculous in my opinion. Lately I've been looking at power supplies. It's always handy to have a couple around of various outputs, just in case you get a system that doesn't come with one. This A and B one with weird outputs I didn't quite get. Some old remote, probably for a long gone VCR. Should have gotten that nunchuck now that I see it. A whole bunch of DVD players. And then this weird thing, that looks a lot like a phone booth, but a bit tackier though. Not really sure what it did. Looks like you can mount it on a wall. In this bin, a uh, old Casio calculator. Still working, interestingly. Let's do a tough calculation, like uh, 6 plus 6. Cool Casio, but not really old enough to appeal to me. This PS2 mouse, on the other hand, might come in handy. It's one with a rubber ball. On the shelf next to it, I found the sibling of the Casio hanging around. Here they are next to one another. This one doesn't power on, sadly. Let's put them back together and move on. This ion film digitizer caught my eye. Not sure how it works, or what kind of film it can digitize, but definitely an interesting piece of equipment. But when I looked at the price, they were asking also a piece of equipment I'm leaving on this shelf. This store had a lot of well-organized cables. Very nice. This power cord caught my attention, since it has the funky style that the really old cassette players by Philips that I found in an earlier episode also use. Always handy to have a spare. Old VGA cables like these I also like to pick up. They make it easy to hook up old systems like IBM PS2s to newer monitors. In this bin, more random cables with RCA plugs. This one with the DIN plug might be handy with old Philips equipment. A Nokia cable also handy since I like old phones. A bin of not particularly interesting keyboards. They were asking 750 for this Packer Bell one, which seems a bit much. Two floors higher was the game section, and I was pleased to find some stuff like this big box game Airport 2000. Oh well, game, this is an add on for Microsoft Flight Simulator 98 to make the airports look more vibrant. Flight Simulator 2020, eat your heart out. On the top of the case, something really interesting on the first glance. Sort of magazine or demo discs, I'm not sure. 720 kilobyte discs, nice. Let's take a closer look at the end. Quick read through of all the game titles. This Raymond game seems quite appealing. Raving Rabbits. A 
peeked in the book section and quite liked this Monet book by Tashin, one of my favorite publishers. The cassettes were a bit expensive in my opinion, but I picked up a couple that seemed nice. Moving on to the next store, a store I haven't been before. That rhymes. The media section was quite big, but also a bit of a mess. Didn't quite get why there was a big amount of suitcases though. Nice, more big boxes. Phonics for kids, no clue what it's about, but I need to expand my software library, so I'm taking it. Some beanies, sort of edutainment for Mac, I believe. And a generic logo maker. Nice. All still sealed. A disc only PS1 game, Soviet Strike. PS1 games are rare these days and when I stumble upon them most of the time they're asking high prices. This one was cheap though. Info games Outcast. Very cheap, wonder what it's like. The electronic section in this store was very unorganized, like the media section, and filled to the brim with not particularly interesting stuff. Even more pre-packed consoles, they had a PS3 with two controllers for 25 bucks. Would have been nice, but that was already sold. This pudding partner was interesting if you like golfing, I guess. Not something you see often though. I had to dig to take a closer look at this VCR. I was on the lookout for one. I am also looking for a combi unit with a DVD player in it. I think that might come in handy in a future project. It has one of those flip out remotes, very cool. But not really what I'm looking for, not too many ports on the back either. Moving on to a big score at the thrift store the closest to my home. A bunch of big box came and even some decent titles. Let's get them down. Boxes seem to be in great condition, and judging the weight, they seem to be complete. I got from top to bottom, Mummy, Tomb of the Pharaoh, Tomb Raider 2, starring Lara Croft of course, Rally Champions, Atlantis The Lost Legends, Ark of Time, Douglas Adams' Starship, Titanic, Egypt The Riddle of the Royal Tomb, and Flight, a simulator game. Quick check at the other games, nothing new to see. In a glass case a lot of game systems and something else nice. A box of memory cards, always handy and some of them are original Sony. I got excited with my stack of games when I saw this laying on the shelf, an IBM branded ThinkPad. But when I opened it up I could see it has been hit by a car of some kind. With a keyboard loose like this, no thank you. But behind this weird pink tchotchke, some decent PC speakers by Active85. Not what I'm looking for though. The next shots I filmed accidentally in 60 frames per second, which drastically lowered the overall image quality of this camera that is already not amazing. This Sony box caught my eye. Inside the box this Sony Handycam for Hi8 tapes. They were asking a bit much for it, but now that I think about it I should have gotten it. Oh well, I think I have a camera quite similar to it lying around somewhere, although I'm not sure if it's Hi8 or Mini DV. Around the corner though I picked up this lovely Wii, missing the top cover. I want to see if my Ender 3D printer can help with that. This Ion tape deck also seemed nice. I think it will be nice to see if I can digitize some of my old computer cassettes to my Mac. Definitely something you will be seeing in a future video. Let's fix it here by popping this key back. Probably two Tenashian drives, but okay. Makes me wonder if you can hack a better tape deck to output to USB. Next to it, wow, can you see it? Yes. Something that looks very old. Oh, my kind of old. A 
A nice case with turbo and reset button? No doubt, this is going home with me. Nice catch, last episode a laser and now this mystery machine. I wonder what it's got under the hood. Let's make some space in my basket. Magically moving on to the next store where I look up this random Logitech USB keyboard. And then spot something awesome. At first I couldn't believe it and I thought it was just a generic satellite receiver. But no, this is a Casablanca Avio. If I'm right, this is an old type of editing machine. I had been bidding on one on the Dutch version of eBay, but the seller didn't respond sadly. But now I find one untested for under 5 bucks. I really want to edit one of my videos with this. It has a bunch of ports on the back and a 20GB hard disk. Let's hope that still functions. This woodgrain receiver was also quite nice. It's by Yamaha and has a bunch of nice switches. I have no place for it though. And I didn't quite like the price either. In this glass case with a big lock, they locked up some nice Nintendo stuff. A Super Nintendo game, a couple NES games and some controllers. And even better, an NES. This one needs some restoration works, judging by the looks of it. Yeah, so I'm for 20 bucks sure. I couldn't pass it by, although I already have a couple of NESs. I also got a game cartridge that was still in the box. Let's move on to the last store of this episode, Circle Walking. This one is upstairs somewhere. They have a nicely bright glass case, but nothing special to find in it today, sadly. This weird thing by Bosch caught my eye. A lot of weird outputs, like an RS-232 connector and LAN. It's a digital video recorder, no clue. After a quick Google search, I think it's used as a DVR for security cameras. I like perusing these bins when I'm here. Sometimes neat small stuff hides in them. This bin in particular caught my eye and I think I spent 5 minutes looking through it. It had some interesting video cards like this dual VGA, two old displays, also nice, even more video cards with DVI, VGA and some with S-Video. Also some really cool potentiometers and other switches. Also nice, these RCA transistors. So I picked up a whole bunch of stuff and moved on to the back of the store. Where they keep the storage boxes, of which I needed a couple. Especially for my cassette tapes. This one was quite nice, clear top. Also nice these drawers, I got both of them. Nice. My final find on this episode of Circle Walking. Let's take a look at some of the stuff I picked up, like Airport 2000 and the book with Monet's painting. The PC discs, which are not magazines but just demo discs with a cardboard backing and big description of contents like West 3D, change cursor to change your mouse cursor. One thing I don't quite get is on the front they say 720 kilobyte discs, but 1.2 megabyte super software. Also on the other one, 1.5 megabyte super software, and the last one even says 2.1 megabyte super software, and only has one disc inside, as I can see since the bottom is open. Let's see what the software is like in a future video. I also got a stack of big box games, a old mystery PC, 286, 386 or maybe something else. Hopefully it doesn't has XP on it installed or something. My Casablanca editing machine and the NES, which I'm happy to say had a game inside. I hope to make a restoration video of the NES edited on the Casablanca, but that will probably take a year or more to take form. The storage boxes I already filled with cassettes and the other stuff I put away for future projects. Thanks for watching. Oh and yes, this Sunday this mini channel celebrates its 2 year anniversary. I'll be streaming something special that day. So maybe stick around for that one. But for now, blue.